Hi, this is Mike, and I've had a comment from Stephen with regards to dynamic taxonomy filters in oxygen builder repeaters. And so what I'm going to do on this video, this is a follow up video from a previous video I made about the which described the problem I had and how to solve it. But in this video, I'm going to just zoom straight into the, the, the techie bits. So let me explain something about this page. This is a oxygen template and it renders output which is uh, c contains a, a repeater okay so what we're looking at now is a page the page contains a repeater and the repeater is set to filter or display these items based on certain constraints or filters or parameters so i'm going to go into the oxygen page now and show you the same page and if I go to the repeater you can see that the normal constraints that you have to work with within oxygen do not allow you to use tags or taxonomies to filter things so you you know you can you, you, you can filter by post type um, and I've got a post type portfolio so there's hundreds of items that match that post type but there's only some of those items that are tagged to the category I want to show on this page um, because that's a bit cryptic so let me each of these menu options is showing the same page and the same template and the same post types but each of these menu options represents a different tag okay so that means each of the components within the repeater is a page of its own or a post let's call it and that post is tagged to belong to each of these categories Okay, so I got stuck with oxygen because I want to be able to specify the tag and I couldn't find a way to do it so you know you can you can put in taxonomies you can say only show trains that belong to the railway models taxonomy but we want a specific set of sub subset of those based on tags so let me go to one of these pages to show you the tag so we're completely clear on what I'm talking about so we've created categories within the portfolio and you can uh, you, you, you can tick the item to belong to the portfolio gallery great but we also want to be able to associate it with the the, the, the subgroup on its own so let's have a look at the portfolio tags let's have a look down here. Um, yeah and there was no way I could specify the metadata properly. Um, you can try and, and use any of these options and it doesn't offer you that extra level of depth to filtering. If you find yourself stuck in the situation, then I will refer you to our, our new best friend, the code block component. Um, and put it this way, no matter what selections you make in this page, they're all ignored and they are overridden by the code block. The code block supplies all the filtering information into the repeater. I'm going to show you what the code block looks like. Let's have a look at the PHP. I'm going to put a link under the video to a Git repo or somewhere you can lift this, this code so you can copy and paste it. I might even try and put it in the description, but I think that looks a very ugly use of a YouTube description. So I'll put something, a link to it. Um, so the first thing I'm doing is creating a session, a PHP session. So in other words, we are going to persist a certain value in, in, the, in that user's session on the server in memory. And that is the current, the current category, cur cat. Now, yeah, I'm reminding myself how this works now. I'm using get field category name. So get field is for um, custom fields. Yeah, so I defined a custom field. <coughs> Let's just have a look. Most likely it's uh, custom fields. I think this is the, the page gallery we're looking at. And we have a category name. It's simply a custom text field. 
So now when we create a post, within that post we populate the field and it matches the taxonomy, the slug, exactly. We're using the category name on each post as a value that we can retrieve from the post when the user's looking at it and, and to feed that in, 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 into, in into our function. So essentially we create a session with, with getting the current category name on the current page we're looking at and, and we're storing that in a session so that we can have access to that session value between page loads. The next thing we do is we specify a simple function. Huh? The function takes the query parameter. This is populated during the event hook. So the action, there's a, there's a WordPress predefined action in WordPress called pre-get posts. What pre-get pre -get posts does is it it, it triggers, it's an event that triggers just before any WordPress function returns posts. We're returning posts here and what we're saying is right, just before that happens, what we're going to do is we're going to attach um, an event hook there and we're going to run some code called search filter. So essentially we're saying when, just before we get posts, run the search filter function and that's the search filter function there. The dollar query value, the object, comes to us thanks to the pre-get posts action. It sends that to us. So you won't see any reference to dollar query being created by us. It's it's provided. Because before a post output occurs, there will have been a query in the runtime um, that generates these results. So all every result is... is uh, preceded by a query that's running. So this is the query. So what I'm doing is essentially taking that query object here and modifying it. I'm saying forget everything we said in the repeater. Forget everything we're saying in the repeater filters. Just ignore it. And instead of that, please just do this filter instead. And it's simple. I basically um, set the post type of our query to only return portfolio. That's the slug of the post type. And then I set some query um, parameters as you do in WordPress uh, within an array. And all I'm saying is the taxonomy should be portfolio category and the term you want to filter must match session cat. Session cat is, is dynamically taken from the page in the custom field. So this, uh, I would call it a bit of a hack. Um, the alternative on this project for us would have been to create or to duplicate the oxygen template about 20 times, which I contemplated doing at one stage. But then I realized that we were on the first iteration of, um, of a new release. And if the client had any tweaks to make, then we'd have to do that times 20. If there's any bugs or glitches or styling changes we'd have to do those times 20 and I'm a developer so I know there's a better way and uh, this is the solution I came up with for completely having control over the query that is generated on a on a repeater or any oxygen component which generates search results I hope that gives you a little bit of insight and a, a bit of a better explanation than what I provided earlier. I'm always here to help. So if you've got challenges, you need assistance with the project or you have spillover work, give us a call. I'm happy to speak to anyone. Happy to talk. Thanks for watching.